Hello. Hello, everyone. It's just now finally started. So the ups, ups that now and I will talk about the uh, cloud spanner and the steps that the Mel Bay took. So this is a panel discussion session on live. So if you have any question, please feel free to post the question uh, on a YouTube chat or the Twitter hashtag, hashtag Mel Bay Tech Fest. We will pick up the question as it comes. So let me uh, introduce myself. I'm called Simero. I belong to a solution team. I was looking over the GAE in the past, but currently I started to use in the cloud run. I used to use the um, data store, but now I'm using the spanner as well. So nice to meet you. Okay, Abusta Neville. So I also belong to the solution team. I joined the Melgali two years ago, and then I was looking over the whole GCP, but then like uh, execution plan on the cloud library implementations around the uh, cloud spanners uh, are my responsibility. Okay, let's get started. Well, I feel like it's almost, uh, you know, getting to the end, but then, uh, you know, I do like to um, talk about the topic one by one. So this is the really release history of a Mel Bay and Spana. So I do like to look back the past a little bit. So a Spana, uh, uh, had a GA in 2017. I think it was about a January or February time frame. And around the summer in Tokyo, like uh, either the next to a summit event by Google was held and oh. then the Tokyo region uh, came out in that event. So Melpay was probably it launched in February 2019, but it, the development started in 2018. So it was less than uh, one year uh, than the launch of the spanner that uh, Melbay started to use the spanner for the development. Like, yes, actually, uh, immediately after the GA, then we started to use the spanner before even having a, a DNA. Yes, we discussed what we, we should do with the DBE, but then, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, the CTO uh, said back then said that uh, we should choose the spanner. So then we decided on the spanner. So I was using the cloud data store. So fortunately, I was working in Sozo under the Mercury Group, and which creates the Mercury Shop. But up and the cow were being developed, and the up aging was used. So uh, there were quite a few members who were using the cloud data store, and so those people actually moved to MailPay. So so we were used to the uh, Google style DB. So so we were pretty compatible with that. Yes, it's a cloud uh, horizontally distributed cloud database. So uh, you have a lot in common, right? Yes. So looking at the history, after launch, there were some additional functionalities to the cloud spanner. So, but uh, what, uh, and then how did you proceed? Yes. Um, time, to, uh, some time to time. Actually, SLA one node or the CP priority and 
clear instant sizing, granular instant sizing, those things actually impacted our decision because for each microservices, shall we set up the spanner or shall we include the um, multiple microservices in a single spanner? So we have to think about that based on these. So SLA one node, so unless it is released, unless it was released, the uh, you know SLA was not provided to the single instance. And like a production instance was defined above the three nodes. So then for that, the 99.9% SLA were, was provided. But then for the small instance, SLA was not provided. So for the production use, you have to have the, uh, we have to coexist in the uh, three, above three nodes uh, instances. So what, what we did at Melpay, but now, so we have a one microservices in one instance now, right? For the de development environment, So about a, uh, about eight thousand yen is enough. So for uh, if you set up the one microservices uh, or one uh, instance for in the development environment, it's okay. Yes, you may not need the SLA for a development in environment, but then if we coexist, then that the, there are some problems. Yes. Vision san or Kuchiki san teams, SRE team created the uh, shared spanner instance. So we were all in there, but it's for the development purpose. So we have some authority so we can uh, delete the instance. Therefore, some people made a mistake to delete the instance. And so a uh, whole whole uh, like a condominium just disappeared. Right, the, for one, one team have the one instance for, for a development environment now. So that problem is solved now, right? Yes, uh, you know, we have more choices now. And also around, after the launch, we kept feeding back to the Google or requesting the uh, functionality like a point time recovery or backup related recoveries. We've been requesting. Yes, uh, we we repeatedly requested those. Yeah, before that, what did we do? Export. We we did an export like a back, not the backup restore for the data store, but uh, we exported. And we exported the spanner as well, just like we did with the uh, data store. So backup export was uh, stored on a Google Cloud storage and sometimes uh, stored in a multi regions, yes. Therefore internally when we say backup, it means, it meant export. So uh, it's confusing. It was confusing, right? Yes. So what's the definition of backup? Like that was a question, right? We may not restore. We sometimes archived. So uh, it's confusing. It was confusing. It was, yes. Right. For a BI, for the BI, like uh, we put the, something on a big query. And so uh, then that the multiple things extracted the data from the spanner. Yes, point in time recovery is now available. And so for the uh, latest one hour, you can go to the time travel, you can do the time travel or you can extract the data. But for and now that the Google extended to uh, seven days, so multi-version currency, concurrency control. 
So uh, the multi versions are stored in a storage, and the, it the perpetual store is a waste of uh, resources. But um, the they uh, extended the storage period to uh, seven days. By that, like they realized the point of point in time recovery, and also in point of recovery queries are also available. And also, because there it is queries available, export flow snapshot time is also can be defined. So it was a kind of convenient feature. Yeah, right. You can take it daily. So 0, 0.000 time, that's the processing time. If you define it or set it up, that's going to be the data at that timing. So that would be useful. Yeah, when we used to export, so there are is a timestamp. Timestamp did not match among the multiple database. So, but we just ignored. But since we can specify snapshot time from this feature, so in within PITR, so that we can specify snapshot time. So timestamp would be very is getting convenient. Yeah, we have many DBs. So each of them, if we try to back up for each, so if the timing is dispersed, when we try to restore as microservice in general, the data consistency will be very damaged. However, so in the end, that ends up in the spanner function. So in a sense, that would be good. Yeah, we can have a uh, common stamp, a uh, time stamp, thanks to this. So that's a good. Yeah, this can be always a cap gap, right? Cloud Spanner instance on the side of Google side, there is a watch and GKE, GKE instances. So there is also a watch. However, there two those two watches sometimes have back uh, gap, and that was also sometimes cause problems. Yeah, maintenance sometimes is stopped, and I think especially that in that timing there can be often some gaps generated as for timing. So I really understood and felt that the computing time is not always in sync. So spanner is uh, very trustworthy. So we always basically try on the quality of database. Yeah, I really, it was a good opportunity to consider what is time, what is the current timing or the clock. Yeah, everybody trusts uh, your watch, but if it's not always true, even when you trust it. And CPU priority. So this is also a kind of convenient Tool. So it's, of course, it is not perfect. That does not solve everything, but so for example, you cannot create read replica, but by defining a CPU priority to some extent, you can lower the priority for some. So it was a kind of a nice function. Yeah. So some are latency sensitive. So the request that microservices request. So the query should not be bothered as for such kind of services, but they would like to run some backup support. So the execution from cloud data flow has, uh, is running with lower priority. That was the original point. We don't know the reason why, but it was true. And as for the batches written by Go, so they have the same priority uh, with the uh, common microservices, then that would disper disturb microservices execution. Therefore, we made a request for some days and it was executed in this state, which was very happy for us. So they are visible. So I really wanted to use this, although we were it was not allowed. So Google, that was only Google specific. That's right. So we were expecting that we can also use this function. So, and this one, Spanner emulator. This is also a convenient one. So we, at the time, we did not have this Spanner emulator. We were searching for many other ways. 
So it's uh, not an open source software spanner. So we definitely need cloud in order to check the behavior. So in that timing, so granular instance signing was not available. So it's very hard to make up some instances. So the environment, the secure environment that we can check the behavior is very important. And we had an in-house emulator and it has higher compatibility, but they made up this emulator and it is highly compatible, so it is convenient. Right, from the global point of view, so this made all of the people to easy to all the people to make uh, feel easy to use spanner other as a, as for for example other vendors and users yeah but one weak point is the, if there is a little additional function enhanced to the cloud spanner service, there is always a time lag as for the addition of that feature to spanner emulator. Yeah, this graph shows a large scale type of changes. However, there are some uh, minute changes such as as for uh, TTL function and so on. There are many other uh, detailed things. So emulator is not catching up with such changes. Yeah. They share the same big uh, front end with big query. So some SQL sentences often have new ones, new versions, but it will usually take some time until it is implemented. So on the production environment, we cannot use it. That often happens. Yeah, it's a kind of headache for us. So in order for them to have an, a simultaneous release, so it's very strange that it should be emul uh, implemented in an emulator. That uh, well, then uh, you should it should be em uh, uh, implemented in um, the production. That's strange. So we have to accept it. Yeah, but we at least would like to know at what timing it would be implemented in an emulator. And uh, recently we had change stream, right? That's also the function that we really wanted to have long time ago, since long time ago. So on the side of the cloud spanner, at transaction, when there are some uh, changes made in transaction, then through API, so each of the change will be tried. But in actual usage, cloud data flow or patch B, B SDK is used so that it would be acquired. And also furthermore, public cloud data flow template is used and GCS and BigQuery would be applied. That's also publicly available. And there are many other ways to use that's so we are seeking for the ways to utilize this further within the, in our team. As for the data structure, so, you know, handling stream data itself is also already difficult. So this might require some effort. So if you, to, you, you are to use through data flow template, then you just give par parameters, that is, but in each partition, it should be gained as a per stream. And also that is divided in that they are always divided real time. So it's very hard to use by yourself. So when you use data flow flow, but you need to learn about batch beam. So at, right now you have to start using from Java. So the ordinary microservice developers, for them this might be very hard to use. That's right. Looking at the real kind of cases, they're too real. And if I can cover all of these, then I'll be a master of spanner. So in that sense, that uh, looks very difficult. Yeah, looking at the contents, so how the transaction is processed, that type of procedure, if you can read through, from this context, context, that would be also interesting. So there are some transactions across various types of transactions, so that would be also interesting. Yeah, if you are an expert, you can be in a spanner SRE. That's true. 
So there are many functions and features released. And we also released and launched various functions and features during this timing. And if some features are added to Spanner, they are get convenient. And we can sometimes change the way we have been doing. We did, right? Yes. Some of the functions and features have, have been already deployed. CPU priority, that's one thing. CPU priority, that's one thing we need to deploy first. Another thing is that, uh, you know, that was a subside of the uh, Spanner's release history. And so another one which went through a lot was the client client library client library. That's uh, in that's a vivid memory in 2019. We had the days of fighting against the spanner and the Kazakh system in marketing. Uh, you know, wrote a blog talking about what he did. Yeah, there were a lot. Yes. As a Google, so they launched a new services and which was a client library. So it's not much, it wasn't matured. And also Google was using the Go. And, but uh, there were not so many people using the Spanner in Google, even in Google. Right, the Google Cloud Go as concern, you know, in terms of its position, is that just a part of Pana, a Spana, or that is that just a sample implementation? So uh, that which that wasn't very clear when I was communicating with the uh, Google. In other companies, like they don't use a Google Cloud Go or client library, and uh, they, they did all from scratch by themselves. But uh, that uh, you know. But you know it would it would be too cumbersome, so that's why that we wanted to use this. And so I talked to uh, Google that to improve the quality. So now the not only the Google Cloud Go but the Cloud Spanner client library dedicated engineers exist in Google, so uh, it's it got better. So if I uh, send a pro request, uh, if the pro request was sent, then like. Uh, you know, uh, the whole company got excited. Yes, I had to depend on those people. Yes, if we raised the issue that uh, dedicated engineer responded to it right away, very friendly. Like uh, pro request or issues are uh, raised when, uh, you know, the, they were merged and then you know, and the functionality will be added, and so it will be uh, convenient. So uh, I had that, but right, and uh, Google didn't uh, re receive the uh, GitHub to receive the pro request. Yeah, we had to use the change request in another format in an official way in order to in order for them to accept the pro request. And uh, Google Cloud Go Google Cloud Go spanner package dedicated person didn't exist either. So uh, our request uh, just uh, left alone in the past. Right, the people who are developing uh, libraries know the spanner well, but uh, they don't know much about the uh, users of the spanner. So they were not quite sure why we need a certain functionality. So, right, uh, we had uh, yeah, some, you know, we had to communicate with the Google people in order to discuss and explain why we, we need certain uh, functionality. Yes, like a forking decision was another one. Like when we retried, you know, we had to wait for at least two seconds for retry. And so we felt that the two seconds was too long. So, yes, and why we suggested, why don't you fork it and then rewrite it? Why we. We talked about like uh, we could just fork it and then uh, rewrite it, but right, 
the session pool was changed. Back then, the session in the session pool, I mean, the keep alive process to uh, extend the lifetime uh, didn't exist. So was, you know, we had to confirm that whether the session is was alive or not, and if it's it was dead, like we had to get rid of it. So when we sent a query, you know, we uh, sometimes got the uh, not a live session. And then every time we did try that we had to wait the two seconds. So the session pool was so unstable because of that. So therefore setting up the session pool was uh, not very usable. So, so we had to go for the uh, very conservative setting because of that issue. Like on the Google side, like they said, like uh, you just have to retry, right? And you'll be successful eventually, right? So that was their uh, theory. And but then, like if for our side, if we retry, then it would take too long time. And so that was a discussion point. Yeah. Even if we would be successful in the end, but then if our request had to wait for two seconds, it's a very bad experience for the customers, right? Two seconds is too long, we felt. Yes, but uh, that was changed because of our dis discussion with the Google version 1.1. Uh, from the version 1.1, the session pool was changed significantly. So the issue that we had was solved, right? In 2019 or the early 2020, yeah, we were kind of a mind, mind sweeper, mind sweeper. And then so we exploded the things a lot. And also the DC side, changed a lot. GRPC itself changed this way so that the Spanner client library has had a dif different behavior, therefore, so the latency was increased. So that kind of topic also happened. Right. Yeah. The GRPC client library issue and the Google client library basic authentication issues, for example, existed. And also Google uh, Cloud Go Spanner Client Library issues also existed. So uh, there were multiple, I mean, uh, multiple layers of issues happened, right? There are many layers of the issues. So for GRPC, Arkit, architect team, Kazegusuri-san, uh, GRPC, oh, we call him and the also the architect team member look looked at them uh, very carefully so uh, they worked very hard on the grpco but recently i mean my impression is that the people who are going to use it going forward can just use a default setting. I mean, they don't have to worry too much about the details, right? It didn't work uh, with the default setting in the past, and, but then uh, we changed the setting, and but now that the performance was changed, and so therefore maybe we could just uh, put back the set, set up to the uh, default. So using the open telemetry or open sensor, open sensors, uh, to, uh, you know, it makes an output and show them that the, how many sessions are being used. So it is, uh, uh, it got much easier to use for if the session pool configuration isn't appropriate, but we can see the session pool status. So we can tell that, uh, okay, this is not enough or that is not enough. And Google Cloud Go is embedded and then uh, outputs that uh, trace. So uh, therefore, this uh, okay. This, there is uh, when transaction happens, and so live transitions isn't enough, or the session pool is small, or those uh, records can be seen. 
So observability of the cloud, uh, Google Cloud Go was improved, yes. And, uh, and so if we had all from the beginning, uh, it was much easier for us to do. But the back then that the open census wasn't matured or even didn't exist back then. So uh, like originally, Stack driver client library existed, and so we didn't use that. So uh, we didn't use that. So therefore, the open census was a, doc, a data doc exporter uh, implemented so that now that we were able to use that, those metrics. So from open census to open telemetry, that type of migration, I think we should expect that. Okay, the next topic is about, well, it's about a recent issue. So we didn't talk at the beginning, but for the, well, for the past year or two, I think we often talk about query performance tuning topics. I think that uh, seems to be a common topic these days, right? So in other RTBS, I think we check execution plans, very details. But as for Cloud Spanner, as for execution plan, we, even when it is not discussed on open venue, but they are, each of them are searching for some ways. And looking at the document thoroughly, so this is the operator, how it goes. And internally, there are such and such parameters. That's why it is goes in this way. However, looking at the execution plant, plant and from the viewer of the cloud console, that nothing is visible. Therefore, in order to review, there is some information required, which we are missing. So on the database side, we are doing something, but that kind of thing would not be available. But actually, Looking at the raw data of uh, execution plan, there is a very meticulous information rather than the other information is available. So, for example, actually, so if you make up a visualization tool too, you can get a very detailed information. And as you can see on the screen, plan visualizer. In a new vision, we see a lot of more information available, which was not available in the previous version. So, but the only way to share is to check, uh, to take a screenshot. However, you have to click it one by one. So it's very hard to review one by one. I think it's very difficult. It's my impression about the usage. So I don't know whether you anybody is using this for review. I have never used it for the purpose of review. I don't either. So we also use another use that was created internally. So in this case, post name. So this is how it goes. So there is uh, the representation by, by text. So Slack, prerequisite, top, GitHub issues. If you paste those documents here, I think that will be good. So I am maybe accustomed to checking on this screen. So, so if, of course, this would look better by updating here, but I don't have many opportunities to check here. So it's tree style. Uh, this tree structure might be easier for us to understand, but you ha you cannot look at the details here. The benefit of this screen is this is originated from remote call, and also pipelines across remote calls uh, is output on the right bottom. So this would be not available in other visualizers, in my impression. So. There is always uh, good points and bad points for each of the visualizer. So maybe you need to cho choose depending on what you would like to So, But we have to review on a GitHub, so that's why we need some text-based information. That's right. So if these are, if we can see the URL, and if you see, look at the URL, 
if we can have the common information, that would be convenient, but that type of thing is not available. Yeah, you can download from JSON, and if you send this to support, support can reproduce it, but I don't think there is a public way to, to visualize this in general. Yeah, upload JSON is not available here. So we can download this JSON, and if you put it in the tool, I think that would be... That's that way we can use it. And by making up this kind of tool, I think there has been an enhancement in understanding about the execution plan. And also the level of the execution level is also need to be absorbed. So there is an optimizer version change. So even if at the time when there were some changes made, that type of information is also absorbed here. Yeah, that's about query optimizer. It's about a history. Currently, I think it's number four. Yeah, that's optimizer version will be the appropriate page we need to go under query optimizer. So, spanner, so one above your selection. Yeah. So, number four. Yeah, version 4. At the time of release, it was version 1. And uh, autom automatic index selection was implemented. Anyway, so originally, it was updated without our knowledge. And we didn't pay attention to it very well. However, uh, we, when we start reading execution plan, I started to pay attention. And at the time of the version 3, it was silently released. So before release note description, version was upgraded. And also I understand that the query behavior is different. So I cannot talk details, but actually we, I have some, we have some troubles because of that. And it was rewritten, and version 3 release was suspended because of that. I think there was such kind of event before. And it would be inconvenient if it is released, publicized silently. So we need to talk about release policy beforehand. So right now, on the release note, when it was released, it would not go into the default, but there, uh, we need to go through three, 30 days of evaluation. And during the 30-day evaluation, you can do verification or you can set it up as a free version. So during this documentation, so it says default version 4. So version 5, it's under testing. So version 5 is not default, although this is the latest. Excuse me. This is not the latest, although this is under default. So it's not default. So during this period of time, the verification is done so that it should be released or not. So in a sense, this would give me a safety period. So what's been changed in 5? There are some changes in version 5. So we firstly need to read and we just fixed for the timing, for the time being. And why did it go to 5? That I just wanted to talk about why it didn't go to 5, why we didn't make it 5. So if we are interested in why, please ask questions on Twitter or YouTube Live. So I was planning to talk about log and logs and tags, but I'm afraid it's time for us. Thank you very much for your watching. Thank you indeed. Thank you. Goodbye.